You know, uh, I quite like Julia Gillard because of uh, she's up against this utter, utter fuckwits. You know, I've been born in Australia, seen all sorts of governments come and go, and compare them to governments in Canada. They're all tarred with the same brush. Bob Menzies, though, the only man I've seen when I was younger, working at the Lithgow Small Arms Factory, where they've made thousands of FN rifles. and golf club heads. And these drop forges. It was interesting to see. One poor lady got both her arms chopped off, but that's not. They still made bullets in the FN rifles. And I worked in the rifle range uh, putting new lights in. Now I'm a kid, 17 years old. And these guns then were putting holes straight through um, steel on these targets. There's about 30 targets in the rifle range. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the impact of these bullets is going through the DFN rifles are firing through them or whatever. I think it was only events, but it might have been red guns. Now my wife to be, Eileen Joyce Rosewell, she worked up in the uh, second floor and another section, huge factories everywhere. And uh, her job was making uh, triggers for the FN rifles. Now, in the rifle range, I was testing in, uh, let's say, using 10 of the targets. That's these uh, about 1200 mil square with one inch thick plate steel and then all the lead goes back and it's supposed to hit in the target because they're sighting the gun. And uh, some of the bullets will go to the right or the left, 500 mil. And they have this way of collecting it. And of course, you can see the power hitting this 45 degree angle of uh, steel. And uh, I could ascertain what kind of steel it was by the type of welding. So it was pretty, pretty good steel. Pretty high. And I was drawing holes right through it when I hit it on the flat. Bob Menzies showed up there. And I'm wondering, because I'm seeing my future wife every day, I walk in and say hello, and she's making these triggers for the FN rifle. So in the range, the mob is testing 10 guns at the same time. This old man with Parsons uh, and these mammoths. When in body passes. We didn't. And <clears throat> he set all his guns up and then he rifled through, set the sights up. Boom, boom, boom. Next one, boom, boom, boom. That's what he'd done all day. So let's say he'd done one a minute. How many can you do in a day? Got over one. So it don't match up the amount of triggers they're making. So what they're doing is the world order has keeps these weapons in production. So this is uh, say 18 years after the war, 17 years in, something like that, 15 years after the war. Bob Menzies shows up there. He's a member of the Garter. That's what Prince William uh, is a member of. He's the thousandth point of light, according to George Bush Senior. And he is a good. And amongst them is Lord Balfour, Lord Rothschild, they're all Knights of the Garter. So it's like this superb uh, satanic um, beast. It's these are your politicians. Peter Garrett, yeah, I've seen him. So Bob Benz is no good. Peter Garrett, he's a turncoat. I told the world how the winds were taking this uh, radioactive dust from the uranium mines, which was poisoning the area of uh, the inhabitants of Helenstown or something. 
where they were all getting these animals becoming uh, totally um, deformed with cancers. And the people were coming down with these rare diseases. So I explained that. Now, I'd seen Peter Garrett in British Columbia when he'd come out there over this bloody uh, logging deal. And he was quite right. And he's standing on the back of a truck with his band and this gangly looking spider fellow is singing, embarrassing me like an Australian. So I. <coughs> Now he's a turncoat. Sell down. You get a choice. Get the money or you're dead. So they've all <coughs> become uh, ensnared by a system they think that in majority is going to keep them safe from the crushing hand of God. Well, they made a mistake. Then you have Tony Abbott. The way he talks to you, and uh, this is a man that wants to be the king of Australia. I wouldn't put him in charge of a garbage truck. have it filled in five minutes talking. So that's the options. And people wonder why. The um, one I've chosen for Australia is Julian Gillen, because he's an atheist. So was I once. I couldn't believe this bullshit. Then I thought, there's got to be something back greater than that. I remember what Mary said to me when I was a kid. You know, I'm not going to do extraordinary things. The problem is, no one believe me. <clears throat> it's just a bloody promise. So I got uh, a lady that's uh, got a homosexual daughter. And uh, I bought her a computer. She had to be online when I bought her a computer because the computer physically. And uh, she couldn't live with the daughter because there was a lesbian relationship or something like that. So now, we get her back in life. Uh, the group finds her somewhere to live. And uh, now I'm given judgment. And I've said, <clears throat> everyone's got to reject her. So she was my greatest admirer. She talked about me as a Clint Eastwood of Australia. It's quite a compliment, isn't it? So I can read my mind, and I did some extraordinary things that really, really, really good. So she started to argue with me, and I said, You don't argue with God. I said, If you argue with me again, you're out here. So my judgment was that no homosexuality in paradise because we're dealing with a quantum here that is how it is I mean, the physicists all agree that if you get people thinking something it happens and that's why they've got to keep you in fear and terror so they control the quantum and I control the outcome Ash looked over at me the other day, she said, we've done it, haven't we? Yeah. So this message is going to the world concerning Julia Gillard, and I'm talking about the, the various politicians I have seen personally. John Howard was one. Yeah. I've seen him, he's a demon. Mm. Oh. There's Lucifer himself right there. The next one, smartest man on the planet, which I outsmarted in about two seconds, Dr. Barry Jones, a Christian master, mm. super brain, world champion. Mm. I had him beat with one question. The true of life, I said. This is in a Jewish um, 
Zionist uh, Talmud preaching Noahide laws of the Institute of Humanity. And Barry Jones was disgusted, was he not? He was disgusted with them. Mm. What they had planned to do. Now I'd already been banned from talking because I asked <coughs> a lady had asked a question. She said concerning um, now these Jews will back me up. Mm. She said concerning how we Jews got a message from by Noah talking to them, the Jews, on the ark. Right. I didn't want to tell them what it was, so I said, well, I get up and I said, I think I could answer, I have a question, question time. This lady had asked a question to the rabbi and he fluffed her off. He said, oh, it's a bit complicated, I can't talk about that, Andrew. Is there anyone else? And he looks at me for desperation, because I've got my hand up to ask a question. And he thinks I'm a Jew. My name's Marshall. So I stand up. And I said, I think I can answer that lady's question. I then revealed the utter bullshit of the only way that the Jews could have been told the secrets of Solomon and the commanding of the angels to do the dreadful things, hence the Hindi and original prophecy of the raven released from the ark twice. Second time didn't come back. It has telescopic vision and flight at 30,000 feet or something. So then Noah knew he was drifting in the right direction. And it's Sri Lanka. But the fallen angels who have become the giants that uh, mated with sluts because they had penises like horses. These are giants, 20 feet tall. And they were the angels, the fallen angels. See? The only difference between an angel and man is uh, immortality. So the angels aren't immortal. And that's the power I got out of them, so that's what you want. You control the quantum in, in the sense that the uh, people looking back on this when they're living in paradise and uh, all these things are brought to pass what I promised them in the Garden of Eden is confirmed by Barry Jones, Dr. Barry Jones, who I contacted afterwards. And I just explained to this lady before lunch that it was impossible because Jacob and his son Judah, the fifth boy, was only 2,500 years ago. And Noah's Ark, 5,000 years ago. How the Jews become the good Jews they are today with the Talmud is the raven was the spirit of Lucifer that was the deal I struck with Lucifer in this chess match of intellect. That I could come back as a baby and ask money. So I talk. But you can't go back as an angel because you lusted after the women and you produced giants. This is a David and Goliath story, you see. So, Let's go small arms factory, producing hundreds of thousands of triggers per day. There was bucketfuls. Down and up. We also worked at a place called Malleable Castings. 
and I might brass taps and various brass and uh, cast iron objects. It's very interesting how they do it. You cast molds into a sand type material. It has a very high uh, heat resistance. And they could pour brass in it in the shape of the mold. Brilliant. So I'm wandering around at night shift and looking on them. And I see in this one area they're casting water bombs. about 20 years old. It's working as a uh, tradesman. If I want a job as a carpenter, I just go and become a carpenter or a bricklayer. Truck driver. Taxi driver. I want to see what's going on. Now I can assure you, assure you, They are insane. We are locked into the first thought. Because it's the oldest thought, it is the one that dominates what's going to happen. Because we're at the end of the play now. Because in Hindi, future, past and present happens at the same time. Because that's consciousness. Seven and twenty-seven. Oh, I'd look that number up. You got seven and twenty-seven there. There's a jewel opposite. Opposite. Antagonistic. Antagonistic. Over against contrary. O over against and contrary. <laughs> Pine, sorrow, to mope. Yeah. I know it well. What is interesting is it's the balance of an account that we have. And I've it's been in my mind to look it up to see what it is. That's the balance in one of the accounts? Yeah. Can you get it online? No. <laughs> Can't you get it online? Um, Let's do a screen capture. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, not from this computer, I don't do anything here. Well, do it from this one. Not there either. What do you have from Giles? <laughs> of course, you, as you will uh, agree, though, I have no idea what account you're talking about. No. Whether you're talking hundreds of dollars or, or small amounts, I have absolutely not the pocket. Point being, this is how it works. It's 1909, 1910, 1911, 1912. You say, well, what is that? Well, that's 1912, 1916. As it's going through 19, 1920, that's a great pyramid. 1922 is when the first of the nations were. 1925, 26, 27, and all these things are revelation numbers. They have reference to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. The Bible itself is not to be read in full context. This is just a nursery rhyme. It's saying, read that verse, and that's it. Then read this one, and they relate to what it's talking about. That's the brilliance of it. So the Quran will do the same thing. I haven't looked at it. I haven't read the Bible. What a really bullshit book.
Well, Mary told me I was when I was six years old. I thought everyone had angels appear to me. And I find out no one does. Uh, Nicole will remember this. She was sneaking up behind me into the garage when we played, uh, lived at uh, National Avenue Loftus, 144, up the back. And in the garage, I'm building this machine, and some aluminium got stuck in it. And I've got the blade pulled back in my saw. And as I stand up, I let my arm, because the thing weighs 10 pounds or something, swing it down. And the blade spinning, and my little girl was creeping up behind me, and the blade was heading straight for her face. And Gabriel said, "Stop!" I don't. And I froze on the spot. She must still be able to feel the air coming. So she's my reluctant witness. And that little girl, of course, uh, is... I was there at the delivery and the doctor wasn't. They had intended to kill you. Because you're my daughter. And it's the date. If you don't get a... If the baby is dead on delivery, you don't get a birth certificate. That's what it was for your stepbrother. You didn't get a birth certificate because you were dead when you were born. It's not in the card game. It's got to be in a place where you start gambling with it. Baby's born, worth 6.9 million days dollars a day, that's a straw man again, to some Zionist you will trade your body <coughs> for all your life and will nominate a day that will have you killed accidentally or something or you will die of natural causes. Something to have all sorts of gambling going on. Called 1727. <laughs> I love it. Right, I'll have to... Uh, do you know how to get this other bleed thing working, the screen capture thing? <coughs> Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, uh, down here, the icon, I think, or whatever, whatever your icon is, just mark screen recorder. This is falling. Shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, but I this thing interferes with all the time. Mm -hmm. Repair. I should have an icon sitting there on that. Mm. All right, let's see. Yeah, get that one out of the way while uh, there it is. Where is it? You just closed the wrong one. Mark Green, what are you looking for? Get back to here. Oh, there it is, on the start up. Let me get out of here now. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't need that. We've got to go back to it. It's already in the start up mode. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, damn, mate. What's this now? See, this is what I was coming against the other day. It doesn't start it. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll close this other one down. Yeah. 
and go back. Uh, 